Welcome to Path Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. Special thanks to my good friend Jody Best of Best Bet Promotions for coordinating and scheduling today's artists. Having over 20 plus years in the music industry, if you're looking for a highly successful promotion and marketing professional who's extremely motivated, look no further than Jody Best. For more information, contact Jody via email at bestbedpromo at yahoo.com. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners. For all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, Readability, durability, and accuracy look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo's signature green your in and red your out screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefine, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbolzer.com. And today I have returning guests, the metal band, The Loyal Order. They continue to rise to the top. Returning guests, Jeff Buner and Brandon Cook. And oh my God, do you not have this debut CD yet? And I'm in the liner notes. How cool is that? I can't thank them guys enough. Well, their first single, Ready for Dead, killed it. Their second single, Hellfire, killed it. And now, Fuck or Fight, yeah, I said that, is number 12 on the charts. How cool is that? We're going to play the Fuck or Fight video after our chat. And now we're going to talk about all this great success and a whole lot more right here on Pat Soundbites IGTV. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites IGTV, we're rocking the loyal order again today. <laughs> My two great Pacific Northwest friends, because I don't have anybody I know in the fucking Northwest, besides Jeff Buner, the handsome guy with the hood on, and that handsome guy who's got the same shirt on, Brandon Cook, guitar player <laughs> in the house. Him. What's going on, man? How are you? Doing great, man. How are you? I don't know. Your vocal is just... Oh, how you doing? There I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing, doing awesome. It's great to have this opportunity. I can't get the smile off my face. I mean, Anthrax, Corn, Slayer, move out of the way. There's a new team in town. The <laughs> Loyal Order. Holy shit. Well, save the fucker fight for a minute, but holy shit. Guys, I mean, we started with hell. Well, we started with Ready for Dead, yeah, and that went up the charts and going, okay, this is cool. And then Hellfire with what, like a million views, yeah. Going, There's something going on here, and now <laughs> Fuck or Fight is like, I don't know, I wrote down number 12 or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's doing really well. I mean, it's uh, I think it's number, I think it was number 13, and uh on the foundations chart and then it's now number 22 on the billboard uh bds indicator chart you know so we wanted to give it a good run at radio too you know so and uh yeah they've done really well and I, the video's out now and for fucker fight and i think we just crossed the 300,000 threshold uh with uh, the views on facebook so yes I mean, this has been, been one good ride that you know, usually one track, maybe two, but three, and maybe four. I mean, I fall silent, colorblind. I mean, you guys are on a tear. What do you attribute the success to? 
And I'll let you both answer that, whoever wants to jump in first. I Very mean, obviously, cool. the label, you got the product, which is the songs, and the fans are loving it. So, Well, from the, from the outset, me and Jeff kind of put in a lot of effort into, like, writing songs. Like, we really wanted to just be, like, we had this this goal of, like, competing with our heroes you know it's like in in the same level of songwriting i don't know if we did but we that's what the goal was you know we really wanted to make iconic songs that that reflected what we listened to like i mean for me it's like judas priest iron maiden Matt metallica black sabbath you know all that stuff and how do you how do you create something that stands the test of time like those guys do and just just kept working at it and work at it until we I think we kind of found a formula for the way we write and part of it's just like does it inspire us when we hear it back it's like does it make us go oh my god this is amazing you know and but that's how I keep doing it and I just I just keep working all the time on songwriting I'm always trying to keep myself inspired and live a life that tries to keep me inspired too you know so uh, just get out and as Jeff always says you know get out of the way of the song and it's like let it do what it's going to do and it uh it sort of manifests itself for us so it's kind of cool wow jeff, jeff get away get get out of the way of the song yeah yeah definitely that's uh, you, you want me to expand on that a little yes, bit please. yeah 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 Bas basically like good songs are a good song is a, it's it's because it's it's an act of receiving, you know, um, and and if you make it about, you know, you know, like you over hyper focus on it, sometimes like it sounds contrived. I mean, you can write a song. You can, I mean, you can sit down and think about, okay, I'm going to write a song in the key of whatever, and and I'm going <clears> to, <throat> you know, I'm going to dig into this, and I'm going to write a nursery rhyme vocal to it, and everything, right? And it's just it doesn't work, you know. The bet, I mean, the good ones, you have to like. You have to put yourself mentally in a place of, of, uh, of receiving, you know, and then once you download in your brain, you get, you get this, you, you download the inspiration for the song. Um, you, you know, there's, there's, there's a certain, obviously there's a, there's an amount of discipline that goes into putting yourself in that place and working towards something. But once it starts, once you have that initial, uh, inspiration um you have to just kind of you kind of have to sit there with it for a while and and let it kind of it'll present itself the, in the song the song kind of sprouts its own arms and legs you know it's in it hatches kind of and 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 you just have sometimes you have to wait for that second verse to pop into your head or um you know you have to be intentional about putting again you have to be intentional about putting yourself in that place but um, sometimes you got to just let the song breathe and, 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 you know, adjust to the temperature and, and then all of a sudden it comes together, you know, and you have to get out of the way of the song, you know, sometimes I like that. Yeah. Sometimes it's about subtracting and it usually is about subtracting, you know, um, especially when you have somebody like Brandon or Patrick or Kyle in the room, you know, those guys, uh, and Justin, I mean, they can, you know, they, they can do this, they can hand you stuff all day long. And, uh, you know, it's, it's good to just, it's good to just let the song present itself more than anything, I guess is the, it's kind of hard. It's, you know, it's intangible. No, I, I like that. I'd never heard of it said that way. There's so much to it. I mean, you could, you could, you got to know when to stop, right? I mean, I'm not, I never wrote a song, mm -hmm. but you got to yeah. know when to stop. You could really over and go, wait a minute, we lost it here. Yeah. But stop. Yeah. You have to have a good producer. You got to be a good listener and you got to know when to stop and say, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, but I also think, and I don't know if I mentioned it to you guys the last time we spoke is as a musician, I would want everybody in the room together. I know today, studio time, you can send wave files back and forth, but I think all five of you guys are in the North Pacific Northwest. And yeah. if you can get in that room, because I would be afraid to miss that magic. You know, not having Brandon in the room to go, wait a minute, let me just add this riff to it. Or, you know, Patrick or Justin or, or Kyle to add mm -hmm. something and then go, okay, and then build off of that. Because yeah. that's the whole yeah. magic in the chemistry. Yeah. And once you have that initial idea, like typically Brandon and I will sit down and, and you know, carve out, you know, like a, 
a melodic hook or or a, you know a chord progression typically and that's but we don't we don't overdo it at that point we usually just go okay here's where here's where we're at and uh here's the idea and then and then kind of you know chip away at it when when you you know get one or all of the guys in the same place you know um because I mean, if everybody starts hopping in on it right away, it's it's it, you know th sometimes the magic happens that way, you know. But but it's it, it, as long as you have that initial inspiration, you know, uh, that's kind of where it starts. I mean, Brandon and I last night um, we've been working on this this uh, song that's it's in the it's in an open tuning, uh, and I was messing around. It's the the rain song, right, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, the the rain songs tuning from you know Zeppelin. And I, I was just dinking around with an acoustic guitar one day and I found this tuning and uh, and uh, I started messing around with a few chords and I showed them to Brandon and all of a sudden we've got this really cool thing in an open tuning and a beautiful tuning, uh, the uh, open tuning. And uh, we've been kind of, we've been chipping away at this song and, uh, you know, and I, I haven't seen Brandon for a couple of weeks because the weather and I had family in town and stuff and and you know, I got a, I well, during that time I got a little further down the street with it, and Ran and I got together last night, and the song had changed a little bit, even though I didn't know that I was changing anything. You know, um, it's just kind of how it you know kind of presented itself, and we had a we had a good session last night. By the way, we wrote a brand new song too. So excellent. Yeah. It, go ahead, Brandon. Oh, just for me, uh, like part of the getting out of the way is like. I've got a lot of musical thoughts in my brain all the time just because I play guitar and just that's basically what I do for a living. I don't have any other real pursuits that are not guitar. So like I have to be playing a lot and kind of getting stuff down. Like I put a lot of stuff on my phone. So part of the part of the way I get stuff out of the way and get ready for creativity is just playing and thinking about stuff like that all the time. And so when it comes time for me and Jeff, it's like, well, what do you have for this? I've got this idea. And it's like, okay, how about this? How about this? How about this? I got something in my phone. Well, that's not working, you know? And that way, the the creative thought process is kind of always in motion. And then when we sit down, it just, it's already there. We don't have to go back and go, huh, let me forget, let me remember how to write, you know? Let me remember how to get in that space. And, you know, it's, for me, it, it really definitely has to, I have to be like working a lot you know, to really get to that. And if I'm, if I'm writing consistently and, you know, thinking about musical ideas and lots of different styles, it helps me kind of go, oh, well, this is the style of our band. It gives context to like what the Loyal Order sounds like. You know, if I'm playing something, I'm like, that doesn't sound like the Loyal Order. That sounds like X, Y, and Z. You know, let's make this sound more like the Loyal Order or something like that. It mm -hmm. just, it helps to keep the sound of the band. So you stay to, you're doing everything that you can stay to your core and your meat and potatoes of your sound, not yeah. diverting out of it. Well, your formula is obviously working, guys. I got to say, it's killer. It was great to see. Um, I was looking at my notes. I'm like, I can't believe the last time I chatted with you guys was October 7th. Mm -hmm. But it was great to see at the end of the year, so many podcasters, so many radio people placing your debut album in the top 10 of their picks. And yeah, I'm like, man, I mean, from off the grid of a little, let's say, get together, let's try something to write this song for the outdoors to where you guys are today is phenomenal. Um, and uh, my, I tip my hat uh, and, I, and I want more. Let me ask you, is the songwriting therapeutic for both of you guys where you're able to get stuff from growing up in relationships and shit that's happened and you're able to... Um, what's the word um, express it out in a song yeah it's it, it's definitely it's definitely therapeutic I mean um, it's kind of automatic for me like you know it's like I've always got you know a lot of times like in in day-to-day -day life you know I'll I'll be talking to somebody and then all of a sudden I'll trail off in my conversation and not finish the sentence because because uh, so that's there's always a song that I'm working on typically anyway in my head and uh yeah and and you know everything that's real uh, um affects the writing you know and i mean brandon as a matter of fact just recently brought up this I idea that that i'd written years ago when my father passed away i started writing the song 
I wrote it. I started writing it about 10 years ago. I just was, you know, goofing around with something at home and thinking about him and his life and everything. And um, this, I wrote the song and never quite finished it, you know, um, but, and it was really odd timing how uh, it got brought back up because we were talking, we were kind of whiteboarding basically out what our next record's going to look and sound like, you know, you know, sonically. And, uh, and Brandon's like, what about that song about you did about your dad, you know? And I go, well, it's kind of a country sounding song, you know? And, and, but then I realized, I remembered, you know, there's some, some modern rock bands that have these, it, it would be a really good mid-tempo ba- rock ballad, you know? Why not? And, uh, what's crazy about it is he brought that up and a little bit of a, you know, arm chill in, in, in the, the, about a week or two weeks later is when my mother passed away. And, and the, uh, the last verse has to do, is about, uh, you know, dad meeting her, like when it's time, when her time comes, you know? And, you know, uh, uh, anyway, so it was just really weird, the timing of this, you know. It was, no such thing as a coincidence. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so it was like, you know, for whatever reason, he, that song popped into his head, you know, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, so it, you were definitely yeah, that song stuck you know, popped into my head because it's good. <laughs> it's good. it's <laughs> yeah, good. it's just heart, like the heart and the feeling in the in the lyrics and the connection that you have with your dad is just. I mean, it's it's very palpable in the lyrics and the chord progressions and the mood of the song. So that's yeah, what, that's what inspired. And, me. and as a fan, what's great about it for me is we can all relate to it. Yeah, everybody may be in a different angle. I mean, like you just mentioned before, I lost my parents. But when you hear something, you could almost all relate to that whole emotion and what you were going through and what Absolutely. you were thinking about it. So, mm-hmm. and you know what? Fuck, dude, there is no genres anymore. I mean, even though I'm a classic rock guy, our tagline is as the program director is redefined, and we threw that in there so I can play anything. I can play blues. I can play metal. I can play if I want to play, uh, you know. Tim McGraw that did something, you know, who would ever think Ozzy Osbourne and Post Malone were working on something? Yeah. It's mind boggling. Never even heard of shit like that. But Chris, you know what? Chris, if they do Chris it. Stanton and Justin Timberlake. Yeah. I mean, but if <laughs> they do it, I mean, <laughs> music is about. music. I mean, yeah. Post Malone did something with our, with our label guys, you know, with Tom and, and, and Dave. And so, Dave? You know, cool. Yeah. The yeah, they did a cover of one of his songs. So. No, that, I think it's like I think it's it's brilliant. I think it's great. Well, I'm looking forward to it now. I can't yeah. wait for. Is the pressure on when you guys get together? Going the success that we have had so far. When you and Brandy get together, do you go, man? How do how do we follow up with this? Or we just you know what? Just do our thing and let it flow. And if it yeah, happens, it happens. That's kind of it. I mean, we. You know, again, being intentional about about where the songs are going, you know, like putting ourselves in that headspace, just whiteboarding out like we're not we're not trying to like say, hey, we're going to have a song in the key of B minor. And we're right. gonna, it doesn't ha- it's not that it's basically what does the what is the composition of the album going to be like? You know, how many how many ballads we're going to have? You know, we need to f- have a few songs that sound like this or sound like that. And that's kind of kind of where we're at with it, you know, and uh but yeah, I mean, because that, and but it's it's more than anything. It's like you know, once you have, once you have that up on the board there, and then then you let let the creativity begin to flow. And of course, there's a little bit of pressure. It's just like, you know, we have to write some good songs, you know. And and uh, but it it's always so the ones that we're supposed to record uh, just happen. Like the one last night, we were we were writing a song that we wanted to sound a certain way and. And, you know, Brandon was like, you know, yeah, but we got to make it sound like us. And, you know, we were, you know, giving examples of, and then all of a sudden, boom, there it was. And, and he wrote a chord progression that melodically just fit what I was thinking. So it's just, you know, it's kind of a cool thing the way it all comes together. Look, hard work pays. And as Brandon mm-hmm. mentioned before, if you stay with that philosophy of wanting to be the best, like Brandon mentioned before, of your heroes, you know, hey, this is us. And yeah. this is what I learned, and I'm going to stick to it. And if album number two does great, hallelujah. And if it doesn't, it's yeah. our best. These are our babies. So, you know, yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. you just have to you have to put yourself there and, and just let it flow, man. And if it's if it's supposed to be what it is going to be, then you know. And, and if you if you stray away from uh, you know the the intangible like you know inspiration that comes with something like that, and you be, and you turn it into this like you know boxed pre boxed you know yeah now now you're getting set. too. You know, I don't. Who likes getting those for Christmas? You get the pre-box gift set, and it's like, oh, cologne. Is it? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scratch or sniff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for for me, I don't. I don't really feel a lot of pressure to to create because I'm always creating. Like I, mm-hmm. I, I sit with my my guitar every single day. You know, and like I have like my phones full of riffs. I mean, like dating back from the when we before we started i have cassettes like from 2002 of riffs and riffs and riffs and riffs and riffs of just stuff i just keep going and Mm -hmm. so it just uh i i think what a lot what happens with a lot of people is they get comfortable and they stop and they go oh we'll just we'll be able to pull it out of mothballs when it's time you know and they don't they don't keep working the riffs and bands like metallica they have riff tapes and they just keep riffing 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 hetfield's got riff after riff i i remember this one interview with with Dimebag Daryl, he has riff tapes, just like stacks and stacks of riff tapes. And Crazy. You know, probably still that Rita Hating has, you know, of like stuff that never even made any record. So to me, it's like having those little, you know, those downloads, as we say, from, from the universe or the spirit or whatever, that just goes, oh, hey, there's that idea. I got to put it on something. You know, you, you're not even playing and it's there. You have to like... Mm-hmm you know take your toothbrush and do the archaeology of the riff and make sure that the original idea kind of stays intact one of the riffs that happened for me like that was the intro and chord progression for for the river it just kind of popped into my head when i was at a party one night and i was like okay i gotta get my guitar and i sat <laughs> down and played it you know and then he and i fleshed it out little by little you know like well, what do you want to do i don't know it's just how does this song go and so that that's that thing of that's one of the songs that actually like i had so many ideas for it it was hard for me to get out of the way and it took rob going we need a chorus and and i was like well i think we have a chorus and he's like i think we do too just let, let's let's get out of the way a little bit of all these other ideas and kind of like hone in on the chorus and we got the song form going and and that kind of thing is it takes a lot of discipline and also it takes like you know, my ego setting it aside, you know, everybody's got an ego, you know, and like when you're working with like passion and like we were talking about last night, passion and like uh, it's hard to know when to go, okay, I have to let this go. Cause sometimes mm-hmm. it's like, it's like you're, you you got to listen to the idea, even though you're impassioned and maybe feeling a little butthurt about like somebody not wanting <laughs> you to go a certain way and then go, I'm listening to what this guy has to say. Oh yeah, that is better. You know, it is better. You know, in my opinion, as a, if I can keep my objective listener and engaged while I'm going through this, you know, ego power trip, it's like, okay, yeah, you're right. That is better. Okay. I have to let it go, you know, and then move on to the better idea and not cling to it. Even though it was the one I had or like the one Jeff had or the one anybody had, this is better. And we're moving with that thing. That's, that works but that that's part of the chemistry right brandon i mean if you had a big head and said well fuck this i'm out of here then you know but you realize the importance of it i mean you just mentioned it to discipline i put it out there i know it's my baby i know somebody might make a curveball here or there but it could be for the better it could be for the worse Mm -hmm. let's see what happens and as long as you're open-minded to it i mean i think that's what makes a great producer talking to some of these guys that are in the progressive rock bands you know songs like 13 20 minutes i'm like dude what did you decide to stop i mean you can overdo it i mean yes i love progressive rock i love all kinds of music but i always say how did you who said okay let's end this because it just goes on and on what's the feedback i mean obviously i've not met justin patrick or kyle what do they think about the success of uh your your music and things how things are going so far well, you know, everybody's excited, but we're we're all kind of just in I'm on a pause. It's just like it feels great, but it's like we haven't really left the uh, town or left our house. You know, um, it's you know, it's it's a really 
even for me, it's a strange sensation because, you know, we've had, you know, we've been, you know, we've had some relatively good success, you know, for. Uh, and you uh, haven't been on stage once. Oh uh, yeah, well, once, <laughs> and then everything stopped. But um, but it's like, yeah, everybody's stoked about it, and everybody can't wait, you know. But it's it's kind of like, yeah, you get excited, and then it's just like, oh, okay, but we can't do anything right now, you know. So keeping that energy flowing though is like you know um it's you know it's just keeping everything interesting digitally right now and and all that stuff is what kind of what it keeps me alive i know that you know um you know we you know we just can't wait i mean and hopefully all of this energy that we've built during this pandemic time uh pandemia um uh, <laughs> <laughs> um during this time of pandemia i said it again um, you know, I just, we, as long as we can, you know, this energy that we've created, you know, uh, you know, carries us across the finish line, uh, to the, the next phase, you know, then, and that energy will hopefully will have, uh, you know, you know, it'll carry us forward instead of starting over, you know, well, the numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. And obviously people are excited and really attached to the loyal order. The good thing, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. Do we put something out now, but we can't, we can't play it, or we put it out, and then when I say, "Hey, you remember this song," and, we, and Brandon just gets into the riff, people aren't going to take a pee and get in a drink. They're yeah. familiar with all your stuff. You know how that goes, right? You're like, yeah. you, you got everybody on their feet, and then you go, "Hey, okay, so we worked on a new song," and all of a sudden you see everybody just like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They want to hear the classics, you know, like yeah. you know, the songs from all the last records. Yeah, yeah, no, they want to hear the Hellfire and the, the Red yeah, Death yeah. and and Fucker Fight. Brandon, I know you do a lot of guitar lessons, and one of the questions I had for you was, yeah. um, when you're teaching, do you teach them? You know, learned when they're doing a guitar riff, do you try to get the message to the student of um, play by emotion, play by feel? play by making sure you hit the right note uh well the, how do you how do you interpret that to a student that's a good question um i i work with students all the time sometimes they have the notes so i focus on feel or sometimes they have the feel but they don't quite have the notes but my thing is much more holistic than that like i try to make sure that the the you know the technique is is supporting the emotion kind of thing or like the emotion supports the technique it's like kind of it's building all the time i tr i use I, I use a visual like when i'm talking about guitar with my students that everything's organic it all is kind of growing this global organic sort of entity that is your guitar playing and sometimes you have to work on your scales and then sometimes you have to work on your your chords and then other times you have to work on your songs and build all the things then you're writing and just keep growing as as you grow instead of like i'm gonna grow my scales really big and then you've got this sort of oblong out of balance guitar playing you know like there's there's a lot of guitar players out there that just have severe searing ass chops but you put them in a rock band then they're just noodling all over the place they can't play in a pocket you know but they've got these chops and then there's the other end where it's like you know the guy's got tons and tons of feel but he can't play in a band because he doesn't really have the ability to do that yet you know so like i'm trying to get sure make sure all my players that, that work with me have everything that they want and sometimes they don't see what they need to get what they want so i kind of like bolster first confidence you know kind of support them emotionally and like that kind of thing because that's that's really important to know that they don't have to be afraid to go out and screw up or whatever right you know, those <clears throat> kinds of things just kind of getting the ball rolling that kind of thing like creating momentum you know and one of the things that happens in in music lessons is the same thing that happens in bands you know they'll just sit and practice all the time and they won't engage with other musicians until they've reached a certain level or they they're very judgmental of other players or something like that and it's like mm, you gotta stop doing that go out and play you know what record yourself on video we got all the all the technology to like make music better 
So don't get stuck in a rut, you know, keep playing, go meet people, go jam with people, anything that you can do to make, because music is, music is not a solid, it can be a solitary thing, but it's also a, you know, it's a public thing, you know, and if you want to play, you know, really play, go out and meet people and play with people. And just like they're doing with me, you know, they didn't reach out to me because they wanted to sit in their, in their room by themselves. They wanted to play music with people. So a oh, good answer. It's encourage uh, them to get that stuff going. You know, we lose Eddie Van Halen, we lose uh, Leslie West, and started asking some, you know, guitarists. You know, when I go to a show and see you, and you're just up there doing the riff of a song, what are you thinking? Is it the brain takes over, or the fingers? Are you worried that you might fuck up, or you just you just let it go? You just let uh, it go. Well, like by the time you get on stage, if you can't just let it go you're definitely not going to sound the way you want to sound like, so like I, when I'm on stage, I'm actually thinking about like, don't fall over that chord over there. You know, don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't, you know, what's on, what guitar am I using next? Is my guitar tech going to have that in tune? You know, like, you know, I'm try to listen to the rest of the band so I don't get too stuck in here. So if I'm feeling the rest of the band around me and, you know, kind of, trying to pay attention to like where Jeff is on stage or like where the other guys are on stage. A lot going on, right? You'll see, you'll see me like in the, in the, at the fuck or fight video, walk up and kind of nudge Jeff on the arm because it's like, Oh, it's just like stage. If you have to go up for your guitar solo, it's just like, Hey, I'm behind you. Don't elbow me when you go back <laughs> up. <laughs> so I think about that kind of stuff on stage more than I do actually playing. Right. I, I practice at home so that I don't have to think about playing. Right. And, and you know, when that's how exactly how me and Je Jeff could probably elaborate on this a little bit, but we both have that same. And actually, Kyle and Patrick, it's one of the reasons we have those guys in the band is because that's exactly how they practice at home. It's like when mm -hmm. you get on stage, you shouldn't even be thinking about the notes. It's the performing that you have to worry about. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. That's a great answer. I, I just want, you know, you, you, as, again, as a fan, you go to a show, I have, I have such a more appreciation of asking the questions and understanding your side of it from mm -hmm. a musician standpoint. I mean, sure. the vocals, who would ever think, I, you know, you go to, you hear some, you know, Mark Slaughter or whoever, Paul Rogers, uh, Rob Halford. We could go on and on, and we take it for granted. But I start to go, wait a minute, that's an instrument. How do you take care of that, Jeff, without preventing injury? You know, Mark Slaughter goes, I can't. I can do ten interviews in a row, but I can't. I can't go to a recording studio the next day. I just can't. He says right. talking. What did he say? Talking is worse than yeah. anything. And I'm like, what? You know, and obviously hydration and sure. sleep. I mean, Glenn Hughes, sleep. Paul Rogers, sleep, exercise. You know, none of this drinking, smoking, getting crazy. Because mm -hmm. you couldn't you couldn't be able to do the next show, even sure. if it's two days down the road. So sure. it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty interesting to <laughs> really <laughs> understand what you guys are thinking. Yeah, it's it's for me. It's a brand new world because, again, uh, you know, being a new singer, I, it's just odd for me to even say that because I, I just new I, singer, uh, right? And uh, but great I, singer. I, yeah, but I've been learning, you know, how to sing and where to sing and breathing, you know, and, enunciate yeah, certain you know, words, yeah, support, support, and and breath, and like you know, every every phrase is a breath you know, that kind of a thought and, and where your placement is, you know, you, you, not having the placement here, but having it more up here um, of where you're focusing your energy and out the top of your head. And that it's just, you know, opening up all the chambers. Cause if you sing correctly, you could actually be a little bit sick and still do it because you're bypassing the sick part, you know, um, you know, so and, you know, it's interesting that you said tired and, and sleep and stuff like that. Because, I mean, I mean, you know, we're looking at some stuff in Europe and, and uh, you know, potentially going over and do some stuff over there as soon as this all happens. And I, I'm, I, I've been over there a couple of times and both times, you know, switching the time schedule. I don't know how these, you know, guys do that, you know, but I'm going to go like a week in advance and I'm just going to, you know, adjust my you know my clock my inner clock to like 
uh, you know, cause, cause you know, it, when your body's telling you you should be sleeping, you know, and then it was, it's, I'm, I'm horrible with jet lag, man. It's, it, it takes me a week. When I come back, go. like going out to Vegas or going out to Cali and coming back, oh man, I'm, I'm a, I'm done. Yeah. So I go out relax. to Vegas. I start having a few drinks. I'm gambling. Sure. I'm like, this is great. I go, what time is it? And they go midnight. I'm like, oh shit, I was supposed to call my wife. Um, I don't think I want to do that at three in the morning. Yeah, then yeah. I get to bed at like, I don't know, two in the morning, three in the morning, and then the phone <laughs> rings. I'm like, I'm like, uh, like when I open, yeah, what time did you go to bed? Oh, right away. I'm like, I'm like, I can't even. But no, no, I hate. That jet lag going back, I totally agree. I've never yeah. been to Europe, but I could imagine, you know, yeah, if you have to go there a week in advance, just to eight, get eight hours ahead, man. And so it's like when it's noon here, it's eight o'clock there. And so it, and at midnight, when you're feeling like you should be going to sleep, it's eight in the morning there, you know. So it's this whole weird, you know, uh, changeover that happens. So I'm sure that, you know, as I, as I, you know, get my solid footing and, and feel, you know, I just want to, I'm kind of hyper focusing on taking care of it, you know, yeah, it's good, but um, you know, that's, that's definitely something you have to think about. You know, you can't be talking all the time, you know, and the reason talking is bad is because where people typically place their voice and they, they talk here right. and then it just wears your vocal cords down, you know? So I, at times like when I'm thinking about it, I, I even try to speak, up here you know and, and or at least focus there to where it kind of bypasses it a little bit but i'm i'm a rookie <laughs> i'm learning though <laughs> well, you sound good for a rookie my <laughs> man you, you mentioned you mentioned europe and i gotta say i read an article yesterday i don't know the usa today wall street journal covid 70 80 percent kind of down and i see dates are starting to pop up for yeah. artists for, yeah. you know, May, June. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you, Lord. So, yeah, I know. Uh, you guys, I know you're itching. A any thought about doing a live stream? Or is it too much to try to get that sound? Because that's it, the product. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, like, I kind of shy away from it a little bit. I mean, if we were, like, more established and stuff like that, I would be kind of more recording. I, I mean, I could see us doing, like, cover thing or something like that, but... Um, it's just the energy is just not there, man. It's just like, you know, I, I, every band that I watch doing a live stream, yeah, I'm impressed with their whatever, but that, that other component, the energy that's the, that's the, the listeners and giving, you know, it's circular energy. It's like the, you know, the, the audience is more important than the band, you know, and because they're feeding the band and the band is, you know, uh, you know. No, I hear you. I get it. Yeah. I watch them. I yeah. want to hear it. It's great to see them play. But like you just said, there's no applause. There's no, you know, you get so cranked up and then, okay, we're going to go to number two now. Yeah, it's like on, as you're watching the sports, you're watching the guys play football and there's nobody in the stadium, but they've got the sound. Yeah, the, that's. You know, it's just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, my goodness. Yeah. Did you ever think you're going to write a song with the word fuck in it? I know you credit Eric Baker for 3,428 times on the airwaves <laughs> and saying the word fuck. Did you ever think, yeah, do it? I mean, it's used all over the place. I mean, well, I said fuck in every three, one of our, every, every one of our singles. So <laughs> all three of them have. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny though i just I, that was just a funny little play on it you know um that was just like okay so i say fuck six times in that song and uh you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so doing the radio edit was fun you know we changed it to start a fight twice um we we bleeped out fuck twice basically and well, then uh, send me the radio version please <laughs> you'll get a kick out of it man <laughs> yeah it's it's fun though i mean you know so we just we just got creative with that instead of having it be the same you know uh two of them we just took the u sound out of it right. <laughs> so you know what it is <laughs> However, you can turn on television and watch somebody get shot on live stream, but it's not okay to say fuck I'm right. Yeah, that, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. You that's know, it's crazy. just like, God, man, it's a different world we live in these days. What's the fourth single? I mean, we're riding this great wave. Man. Uh, what's we, Tom and, and Tom and Dave thinking? Yeah, well, we're we're looking at um 
we're looking at doing um, uh, uh, Fall to Rise, which is the heaviest song on the record. But I think it's important that we do at least a video for that because of the content and what it is and the intensity and the, the musicianship. I mean, Brandon did uh, one of the best guitar solos I've ever heard in my life on that song. And, and the composition was just the whole middle section. It was very Iron Maiden and cool. And, uh, you know, I just I just really think that there's going to be a, a, a group of people that have heard the, you know, modern rock singles that are going to, there's going to be a new level of appreciation for that. And also feel like, you know, like, you know, one of our, you know, mid-tempo ballads would be good too. So, and I don't know for sure if either one of those are radio songs, but you know, like radio, radio, you know, like depending on what format, you know, they fall into, Look, you know, I'm, that's I'm, kind of... I'm a little squid in a big ocean, you know, there's, <laughs> I have my listeners and I'm blessed because I'm pushing new music and you don't hear a lot of corporate, but you guys are doing well. And I, I just applaud you and I want you to keep, obviously you want to do the same thing, keep, keep the momentum going and hopefully, uh, We'll get yeah. you on some live shows uh, soon and get you in New York. Yeah, great, I'd man. love to play New York, man. It'd be awesome. Man, maybe I need to become a promoter. That's what I need to do. Become a yeah. Promoter. Tell that to my wife. Yeah, you got to be the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do you know any good promoters? <laughs> yeah. Well, every time I come up with another idea, she's like, what? I'm like, squid music videos, new music videos. Nobody does it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The new MTV, man. I mean. I, I know. I can't use that. I can't. I'm not using that squid with TV. that. Squid TV. Squid You're TV, watching man. squid okay. new music TV. Yeah, I no, think I it's awesome, the, man. No, I, I think... could do the radio thing and say, you know. I've known Jeff now. I know Brandon, and this is what they were working on, and this is what they were thinking. And let's get into it. Here's fucking fucker fight, you know? It's, yeah, just do it. Yeah, I mean, I could do I, a double I, shot. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it, right? Yeah. Because we live in a vi vi visual world. Who would ever think you would have a million views on Hellfire? I mean, but yeah, uh, I know there's so much great music that I'm playing. And then I look at the YouTube, and there's like, you know, a hundred people. I don't know what the Spotify numbers are. And yeah, I, that's I mean, what I said to you. How do you how do you attribute this? I mean, obviously, Dave and Tom have done a great job. Jody, mm -hmm. I see you guys are doing interviews nonstop. Mm -hmm. Podcasters, I never even heard of. I mean, there's so many sure. radio stations out there. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, just I mean, it's so important having having people that are like you know like you that are like supporting us and you know you, you know you're it's 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 getting it out there and being about that and 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 you know you're incredible i've watched many of your uh interviews you know and oh, it's are like, you kidding me get a life stop <laughs> yeah. well not, not no I, I don't have it on live stream in I my appreciate house it. But, I but but no seriously man i mean you know guys like you man are really make the difference you know Thank you. you really do you really really look do. i can't i this this makes my life i try to think about great questions because i'm sure you've been asked a million times about the certain things here and there and i it's just my enthusiasm is the music and me when you say things like that i know i'm doing my job and i want to even yeah, do man. more and that's, that's why i'm thinking outside the box can I just play the tracks? Yeah, I can play the tracks, but I, what more can I do and contribute? Because I don't see anybody else doing it. So mm -hmm. I want to yeah. be the first. I want to patent it and say, fucker fight. Come mm -hmm. on, this nose has been broken three times. I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Yeah. I'm messing with the squid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Brandon? I'm in, dude. Let's do this. Music <laughs> Not videos, fight, right? but like, let's get the video. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Law and Order, the Loyal Order, the Law and Order, the Loyal Order dot com on, on your website, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, the Loyal Order, Order Ban on Twitter. And if you don't have this, this CD, or, is it out? Do you have it out? Is it on vinyl? It's not on vinyl, no. It's okay. uh, but but you can get you know uh, you can get signed copies from us. Um, you know uh, we're about to put a package together, so uh, you can get CDs and shirts and stuff like that. 
And, uh, you know, and you can also order, you can order the uh, disc um, from, you know, Tower Records. Oh uh, you can order from Kmart. You can order it all over the place. Yeah. Cool. Well, I encourage people Without to get fame. it because this thing is kicking ass and taking names and you don't want to miss out on it. There you oh there you go I like that yeah I got I got to get one physically it's great oh, we to got, get oh the, yeah make sure yeah I'll, I'll it's, drop it's great it to one. get the digitals but yeah. I I want to open I want to see who produced it I want to see everything I want to read yes, it I will drop you one for sure I, man I appreciate it Brandon grab that guitar give give us a take us away on a little riff here while we get right. ready to play a little fuck or fight on Pat <laughs> Sound Bites IGTV. Go! <laughs> <laughs> yes I almost started I almost started screaming <laughs> I just found out 